So Matthew Sides, The Power of Diverse Thinking, Rebel Ideas. I've been fascinated by Edward de Bono for years, the king of alternative thinking. How close do you get to him? Uh, what can we get out of your book? Well, he is a massively significant inspiration for me. But the thing that made me think about the book is you've got this internet. Yeah. And Tim Berners-Lee, the idea was to bring scientists together to share ideas. And in theory, at the click of a mouse, you can be connected to virtually anyone on the planet. And it was supposed to be about diversity and interconnectedness. And yet what has happened, weirdly, is you get these curious things called echo chambers, where people are surrounding themselves with people who think in the same way, come from the same social background. And there's something called the filter bubble, where the algorithms inside Google search invisibly personalize your searches. So again, you're seeing more of what you want to see. And I think that's a disaster, because really you want to connect with people who are different. It doesn't mean you agree with what they say, but it's going to spark new ideas and I think you do become more creative and, you know, and particularly for young people Chris if you're just hanging around with people who think in the same way how are you going to develop the resilience to live in a, a future world where things are changing fast so what so, so give us some, uh, some 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 golden nuggets please from this book so I think one of the absolutely crucial things for me is just to think about what it's like in social groups so you go to a party and have you noticed how easy it is to gravitate towards people who are the same age as you? <laughs> Billy the Kid said he was at a party yeah. last week and all the 25-year-olds were stuck on one table yeah. and all the older people were stuck on another table. I found now, when I go to parties, I try and find the oldest person in the room right. and the youngest person right. in the room and talk to them. A young person tells you something. You would, I'm 48, middle-aged. You get something from a young person that you would never hear from somebody in my social group. In my social group, we're talking about children, schools, things like that. And then you speak to an older person who starts telling you about his life story, his history, about what he did in the war or what she did. And suddenly, I think you get this completely different perspective. And I think that can be a really powerful thing. We've talked about this to other authors, and it's very busy. You know, the, yeah. the book world is very busy right now, and we love this. And um, you know, your kind of book is the type of book we absolutely adore. Um, but we, we've mentioned before about the fact yeah. that we could be the first generation or close to the first generation of human beings that begin to devolve as opposed to evolve yeah. because we've got past the point of our usefulness to the world and almost to each other and perhaps even to ourselves. It's an interesting point there, and I can relate to paralysis by analysis. You know, in other words, if you think too much about something... Or you it have can too much information. You right, can and have it can too hold much you information. I'll give you an, so an example from my life. You mentioned I was a table tennis player yeah. before becoming a writer. Yeah. And I was so focused on playing well at the Olympic Games in Sydney. I wanted to do it well. I wanted to get my bat angle in the right place. I wanted to move beautifully. I wanted to execute the tactics to beat this German opponent, Peter Franz. <laughs> I was thinking about it too much. I was thinking about, do you know, like, you should be a bit spontaneous. Yeah. You should be able to go with it. That Nike advert, just do it. Yeah. And I completely collapsed. Zen so, and the Art of Archery. What a book. Yes. Mm. That's, that, the, that's the opposite to what you're talking about. It is the, it is the opposite. By the way, I think that's a seminal work in, in the sports literature. And that's what I think is important when you're executing. When you're actually out there performing you should often let go doesn't mean you shouldn't prepare you prepare before but once you're out there on the stage doing the radio show playing at the olympic games going for the marathon run you should let go of all that and allow your subconscious competence to take over. Well, you... so one one thing that struck me really really hard is occasionally i get invited to go into schools and give a talk See, again getting invited by all these I people know. to do all this yeah. You must get a bit of that. Though. No, 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 nearly. No, never. <laughs> it never happened. But anyway, never happened, ever. go on. No, so I went into this. It was like it was an A-level media studies class. And I thought, what am I going to say? I said, okay. Imagine, so I did a practical thing where I said, imagine you are the editors of The Times. You know, you're the sports editor, you're home news and you're foreign and your features. And we're going to decide what's on the front page tomorrow. Any good ideas? And I stood there looking at the class, thinking, you know what, this is like Dead Poet Society, because I was so inspirational in my original pitch. Not a single hand went up. They were, like, so worried about saying something that this guest speaker might say was a bad idea. Or could be judged by. Might be judged by me, yeah. by the teacher, by yeah. the rest of the class. And I could see these wonderful brains with these diverse ideas and insights, none of which were expressed. So, so I, said, I said to the teacher, I said, why don't you kick it off? And she went, no way. No way. And it made me realise that in order to really grow, you need to be willing to put your ideas out there. It might not be perfect the first time around, but by putting an idea out there, somebody could challenge it. That helps you to refine and improve your idea. And I think kids today, if you think about social media, 
They're surrounded by images of perfection, airbrushed photographs. They have to get a certain number of likes. They're being judged all the time. And I think it's leading to what I call in the book the curse of perfectionism, where you don't want to take risks. You don't want to try new things. You just want to stay in your comfort zone and never be judged. And I think that is the best way to never grow. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.